Oh, hi. We've come down to the woodland today to see what's going on, and you may be in for a big surprise. Now, woodlands are great places for animals to live, aren't they, gang? Yeah. Why is that? Because they've got loads of food. So there's food, there's shelter. There's shelter. It's a big habitat. So it's a great place for them to live. Now, you mentioned food. What have you been finding while you've been digging about? Let's have a look. Good Loads acorns. of stuff, but this is what... Ah, acorns. acorns. Right, now, acorns aren't just food. What else are they? Seeds mm. and to grow into oak trees. That's right. Some of them get eaten by animals. Others grow into new oak trees. It's amazing. So there's loads to find here, isn't there? Let's yeah, go and find yeah. some more. You know, oh, there's some berries. Great. I bet, I bet Janice wishes she was here. Yeah. Let's have a look. What can we find? Whew, it's hot in here. Yeah. Hello, we found our own piece of tropical rainforest. It's amazing here. Do you want to all come and show me what you've got? What's all that? And what's that one on the ground there? It's a pawpaw. pawpaw. That's right. It's a fruit from a pawpaw tree. What do you think those dark bits are? Seeds. They're seeds. They're seeds. They're seeds. That's right. grow into more pawpaw trees. And lots of animals in the forest, like bats and birds, would eat fruits like this. And then as they fly off into other parts of the forest, the seeds get spread around. <laughs> It sounds like we might have found just the animal for the job. Should we go and have a look? Yeah. Well, what do you think this bird is? A macaw. It's a macaw. Well done. That's right. And macaws are really important to the rainforest where they live because they help spread seeds around. Now, do you know why they'd be good at doing that? Well, they get them up in their mouths, fly around and keep dropping them. Exactly. Mm. And you can see her beak's quite special, isn't it? Yeah. It's got a sharp thing. Yeah, yeah, that hangs down below. That's right, and that's good for tearing into fruits and cracking open nuts. And the other thing that's good about their beaks, they use them like another foot, and that can help them to hang on to the fruits and nuts as they tear it open. Can you see her wings? Yeah, yeah. look at the tail. Yeah. A lovely tail. And yeah. they've got very powerful wings, which make them good flyers. And as they fly around the forest, the seeds come out in their droppings and grow into more trees. <laughs> Now, Janice needn't have gone all the way to a rainforest to find a bird that spreads seeds about. This beautiful jay is just as good at doing the job right here in our own woodland, but does the job slightly differently. Now, jays pick up acorns, whole ones, in their beaks and then carry them off, often far away, and hide them in the ground as a food store, just like you put food in your store cupboard. Now, when they're hungry and there are no fresh acorns about, they pop off and find those stores and have a meal. But occasionally, even though they're fantastic at finding the stores, they will forget where they've put one, and those acorns grow into new oak trees. But now I prithee, tarry for but a while, and you may see a tale unfold. Tis a story of milady and woodland folk of old. I remember when I rode here a long time ago. Many creatures made their homes in the woods. I wonder if this is still so. I need some modern day nights to help me look. Milady. Ah, oh, children from the village. Ah, oh, good day. Will you help me? Will you see if the creatures are still living in the wood and if they're safe? Tread quietly. I will be watching you. It's this way. Oh, it looks something has been digging. Oh, yes, I think it's badgers. You go over there and see if we can find them. Joanne, come and look at this. It's one of the holes from the badger set. And oh, look, they've been digging out some of the old bedding. And yeah. Badgers, yes. They'll be asleep underground. And they'll stay there till nightfall when it's safe to come out. There were lots of them in my day. Oh, look, there's a beetle and a woodlouse. Yes, we mustn't forget the insects. Look, there's some seeds being nibbled. That's right, there's a wood mouse safely hidden in those tree roots. And there's some fox droppings. I bet that's the earth the fox has used last year. Yes, and the vixen will probably use them again for her cubs this year. So the foxes will be safer too. Well done, my knights. I'm sure I recognise that lady on the horse. Anyway, this is Willow, and she's a ten-month-old roe deer. She's one of the bigger animals that you might see in a British woodland. 
but you'd be lucky to spot her. Why do you think that is? Because she's camouflaged in brown. Right, the colour of her fur? Yeah. Yes. Is there any other reasons, do you think? She always puts her head down so you can't see her. Right, but also she's got amazing senses. She's very shy and she can smell you and hear you from miles away, so you can never get really close to her. Now, what do you think she'd eat? Uh, grass. Yeah. Plants. Yeah. Woods. That's right. Now, they eat all kinds of plants, leaves, shoots, buds, all those sort of things. Now, do you think that that's useful for the forest? Yes, because he, like, cleans up it. Like, if it was any weeds, then he could, like, eat them. That's right. Mm. Just like a gardener would do in a garden. Mm. The roe deer actually managed to prune all the plants and leaves and keep the woodland from overgrowing. And they've got a brilliant mouth for doing that because the lips and the teeth are perfect for pruning. In fact, whether in a woodland or in a rainforest, every animal has a really special job to do. Well, we've got some rainforest creatures here in the shape of the Wild Bunch. And this game is all about food in the rainforest. And this is going to be our food. It's a bit like a chain, a food chain. So let's bring the Wild Bunches in and take your positions. Right, Hannah and Zach are going to be the plants and the trees. And they've got lots of food to give to the plant eaters, the macaws. And that's Jonathan and Rebecca. And the macaws and other smaller animals are good food for the meat eaters, like this jaguar. Adam, wonderful. And over there we've got Becky, who's going to be a beetle. And the beetles have a really important job because they have to clear up all the leftovers, turn it into compost, which goes back to the plants as food. Right, are you ready? Get started! Well, everything seems to be going very well at the moment. They've all got lots of food. But suppose something happens in the rainforest to break that chain. Well, let's spin the wheel of misfortune and see what happens. Round it goes. What's going to happen in our rainforest? Oh, it looks as though it's going to be on green. What's green? Oh, no, all the trees have been chopped down to make way for houses. Hannah and Zach, come on, out of it. You come with me. So that's no trees. I wonder how the animals are going to get on. Well, everything seems to be all right at the moment. The jaguar and the beetle have got plenty of food. But what's happened to our macaws? We've got no food because all the trees have been chopped down. Oh dear. And it looks like our jag was having problems as well. What's the matter with you? All the, the trees have been chopped down and I've got no animals to eat. Oh dear. And Beetle, what's happening to you? I haven't got any food left. Well, it just goes to show that if one link in the food chain is broken, then the whole rainforest could stop working. But, of course, in our game, we've only got a few animals and plants, but in a real rainforest, there are millions of plants and animals all working really hard to keep that chain going. I couldn't count all those ants crawling up that tree, could you? Our first question today comes from Vanessa, who's six, in Thornbury, and she wants to know how monkeys manage to catch the branches of trees so quickly. Well, they're certainly experts at swinging around the trees, and that's because they've got two eyes facing forwards like us, so they can judge exactly how far away a branch is. And then they've got long, strong arms and gripping hands that help them to grab at branches very quickly. The next letter, is from Kate Campbell, age nine, of Copleston in Devon, and she wonders if all snakes can swim. Yes, they can, Kate, and they wiggle about in the water just as they do on land. Well, thank you very much for all your letters. We really enjoy reading them. Well, it's time for our Wild Bunches here to splash about in the Wild Bunch quiz now. We've just had a snake question, so let's introduce the team. Snakes first, they are Adam and Rebecca, and the whales are Jonathan and another Rebecca, and the skunks are Zach and Hannah. I'll each ask each team a question in turn. If you get it right, we scrap a square on the screen and you get a chance to guess what the mystery animal is underneath. OK, let's get straight on with the questions to the skunks. First question. Is a whale a fish or a mammal? Mammal. Fish. Which one? I can only accept one. Mammal. Yes, it is a mammal. Well done. Let's scrap a square. <coughs> Ooh, that's difficult. Doesn't show you much, does Weird. it? Weird. No. What do you think? Have a wild bunch guess? <laughs> no guesses? OK, <laughs> let's move on. Right on to the whales. Listen to this and tell me what animal is making this noise. Parrot. 
I'm afraid it's not a parrot, it's actually a fox. It's a vixen, a female fox. Can't scrap a square onto the snakes. Mm -hmm. Your first question, where do budgerigars come from? Is it from Africa or Australia? Australia. Which one? Only accept one answer. Australia. Yes, it is Australia. Well done. Over there they're called shell parrots and they're all green and yellow. There are millions of them. Let's scrap a square. Ooh, another difficult one. A bat. No, it's not, I'm afraid. It's not a bat. Let's move on to the skunks. OK, I've got something in my pocket for you here. Have a look at this. Is it true that a piranha fish could eat this Brazil nut with the shell still on? Mm. Could a piranha fish eat that Brazil nut with its yes. shell still on? Yes. yes, well done. And that's why you don't mess with piranhas. Let's scrap another square. Gorilla? Oh. Gorilla? It's not a gorilla, but you're very, very close. OK, now on to the whales. What do anteaters eat? Ants. Yes, ants and termites and other small grubs and insects. Brilliant answer. Let's scrap another square. Oh, we got a bit there. Um, what do you think? What do you think? Uh, a bear. It's not a bear, it's not a bear. OK, on to the snakes. Have a look at the screen mm. and tell me which lion is the lady or the female. Is it A or is it B? B. Yeah, well done, it's B. You knew that straight away. Do you know why? Uh, yes, because it hasn't got a um, hairs all around it. The mane, that's right, it's called a mane. The, the male has the mane, the female doesn't. Well done, let's scrap another square. It's a um, bit more. What do you think? A, a gorilla was close. A monkey? It's not a monkey, but you're so, so close. OK, on to the skunks. If a carnivore eats meat, what does a herbivore eat? Plants or everything? You, before I'd even finish the question, they've answered it. Yes, it's plants. Well done. Let's scrap another square. Chimpanzee. Yes, it's a chimpanzee. Well done, everybody. Here's the whole picture. This is Joma, and he's a chimpanzee from the rainforests of Africa. And because his mother couldn't look after him when he was a baby, He's been hand-reared, and that's how we're so lucky to be able to get so close to him. Have you ever been so close to a chimpanzee? No. <laughs> what do you like about him? I like his nose. He's got a nose very much like ours, isn't he? And he can actually smell better than we can. What? What do you think about his face as well? Hmm, I think he's cute. He's cute? Hmm, I'd say he's cute as well. <laughs> he looks very much like us, doesn't he? He's got big eyes like us, and he's got a face that's actually making the same kind of expressions that we'd make. And he can make so many different kinds of expressions. He can look sulky if he's not very happy, and he can look upset if his bottle runs out. And chimpanzees have a very special skill. They can use their fingers to make tools. OK, well, I've got some bits and pieces for Joma. Hello, Joma. Hello, what's all this? Let's see what he makes of this. Now, that's a cardboard tube and a ball. Got some twigs there as well. Now, how old do you think he is? What do you think, Jonathan? Two. Two? Well, he is, in fact, two, and he's still a real baby. Now, do you like babies? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody loves babies. And if you do, don't forget, tune in for next time, because we're going to have lots of unusual babies in the studio. So, see you next time, then. Bye! Bye. Bye.